Welcome everybody to your third video in this ZK app series. In the previous video, what we did is we deployed a verifier. What we're going to do now is talk about the prover. We're going to create a zero knowledge proof locally and send it to the verifier to verify whether it's true or false, whether we executed the code correctly or incorrectly. So essentially a verifier can verify computation if we've done it correctly and are able to get a valid result. If locally we tinker with the code trying to do something illegal, the verification will fail, so the verifier will return false. This is all very abstract until we go through an example, so that's what we're going to do now. This does take a little bit of build up, so have some patience in this video. As we go through this, I'll try to explain everything. To start, we're going to be working in our interact.ts file, which is a script that will interact with that contract, but this code is pretty built out and confusing to just jump into. So what we're going to actually do is start from scratch and build up. First thing we're going to do is have some imports and these are going to come from snarky JS. And I'll just type these out real quick. So we'll say Mina, private key, public key, fetch account. We're also going to have import add, which is our smart contract from dot slash add dot TS. And that's going to bring in the code from this file here. And when we import, we don't use the TS, we just say .js. As these are all going to be moved to the build folder because it's TypeScript. And inside of here, they're going to have .js. All right, so we have our imports. The first thing we do is we get a reference to the network. So we'll say const network and say mina.network, passing in some URL. This is going to be the URL that we used for the GraphQL when we did ZK config. So you can type that out or you can find that inside of config.json. You can find the URL here. So now we'll be able to interact with the network in our code. But to do this, we actually will have to say mina.set active instance passing in that value. As you continue to build out this code, you're going to want to know how to run it. So to do that, you'll say npm run build. This is a command that will execute TSC to compile it from TypeScript to JavaScript. And then you can execute that code with node build slash source slash interact dot JS. So that is how you will execute the JavaScript version of the code. So you can hit enter and it'll do just that. So we need a way to identify our application so we can use our public key. So const app key and we're going to need to convert this public key from base 58, which is the way it currently looks, to a public key object. So to do that, we say public key dot from base 58 and then pass in a value. So here is where you would pass in the value for your smart contract, which you can find on the Explorer if we still have that open. But if you forget this value, you can actually find it inside of this keys directory. There is our deploy alias where you can find your public key. So go ahead and copy this value and paste that here as a string. So now we have a public key that we can interact with in our code that represents our smart contract. So our goal now is to actually interact with the code in add.ts, such as getting that initial value or updating a value. How do we actually do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new instance of add and we'll assign that to a variable. We'll just call it our ZK app and we'll say new add passing in our app key. And now we can try to access data on the ZK app. We'll say ZK app dot num dot get and then to string. So that's quite the command. Basically what we're doing is we're going to go into our smart contract and get the value for this num state that we originally initialized to one. When we do that, we invoke dot get and then we convert it to a string which is just something you need to do because in here it's defined as a field, which is slightly different and is one of the things you have to do for zero knowledge proofs. So running this, we get an error. We have to do one other thing, which is say fetch account and pass in the ZK app address. So await fetch account. And then in here, we'll just create an object public key and assign it the app key. And you can see we get the value one. So what did we just do? Why can't we just go look at this here and see the value there? Is this all local? Are we interacting with the blockchain? We are in fact interacting with the blockchain because this value is stored in the ZK app state right here. So if you expand this, you can see 
the value one stored in the ZK app state. So all this deployed ZK app is, is a verification key and then eight values of state. All of the execution code, this add.ts is local. So you can't actually see this contract code up in the Explorer because it's not associated with the ZK app, only the verification key is. You can also see this in other Explorers like we have here, minascan.io, selecting our address and viewing the ZK app state, the value one. So hopefully that gave you a good idea of how we can read state from the blockchain. Overall, it's not too bad, but once we want to start interacting with it, we have to create zero knowledge proofs, and that's what we're going to do in the next episode. This will validate that our local execution was done correctly. If you remember, the smart contract code isn't actually on the network or on chain, so the only way that the ZK app can know if things were done correctly is with that verification key. This verification key uses pure magic to verify our local execution was correct. I didn't show creating the zero knowledge proof in this episode because there is a little bit more you have to do to set up to prepare for that. It's not too complicated, but we are going to learn how to generate a new key pair so that we can interact with that smart contract from a different account. Before we go, I wanted to show you one more thing, which is how to interact with the GraphQL endpoint for a network. If you go back to our code where we have that URL, we can just open it. And this will bring up a UI in the browser where we can interact with the GraphQL of the MENA network that was exposed through this explorer. So this will allow you to basically execute SQL-like commands, GraphQL, and you can see the documentation here. Now this is self-documenting, so for example, you can figure out what you want to do. So for account, you can provide a public key, and this will return an account which has all these different attributes on it. One of the things we grabbed was the public key seen here, and somewhere in here, the ZK app state. So you can take your public key, copy this, build out this query and paste your public key, run this, and you can get some of the same stuff seen in the browser by visiting the Explorer directly, but now we're accessing it through GraphQL. So as you can see, there's various ways of connecting and working with the network. So hopefully that gave you a good introduction to starting to work with our deployed ZK app. We haven't done too much yet, but we know how to read our state through GraphQL, the Explorer, and locally in TypeScript. In the next one, we're finally going to create a zero knowledge proof, probably something you've wanted to do since the beginning. So stay tuned for that video. That's where we're going to actually update the state in our ZK app. I'm quite excited for it. I'll see you in the next one.